Hey guys, Crewman here, and in today's video, I want to help you guys navigate the new and used market and give you my opinion on what I consider is good value for the mid-range market. Originally, this video is going to be both mid-range and high-end, but I have a feeling it's going to take quite a bit of time, so we're going to split it up into two videos. Again, this is based on my knowledge of the GPU market, which is based on you know studying the market, studying the used market. I basically do uh, once or twice a month, I check the sold eBay listings and I use that. Now, obviously you can find deals better than on eBay, but eBay is the great equalizer where everybody can go. And again, this is only going to be in the U S market. Only if you guys have experiences overseas, please share them with me so that I can maybe pass the data along to other people. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to go through the GPUs of this generation, last generation, and two generations ago, and we're going to establish what the gold standard is in terms of price to performance, and we're going to base everything around that, and we're going to adjust our prices accordingly. If you don't get a used GPU for the price that I recommend, just don't buy it as you the market is very weird right now and used GPUs are selling for more than new. So without further ado, let's dive into it and please make sure you like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. So all of the data that I've personally gathered and these opinions are my own, but I like to think that they are valid. So just remember, if you don't agree with the way I view GPUs, you're probably not going to agree with most of this guide. Okay, so let's start with mid-range. And while it's kind of a result of the state of the market and how nvidia and amd tend to price their gpus in my opinion mid-range is a gpu capable of maxing basically most 1440p monitors with a starting price point of between 400 to 500 dollars and ending closer to about 700 dollars give or take i admit this is more subjective than my high-end value guide but we're going to start here and let's start with what is the gold standard from last year. Now that was the $600 4070 super. It was an amazing GPU when it was released back in early 2024. And you could basically overclock it into a 4070 Ti, which is basically a 3090 Ti minus the VRAM. This GPU was destroying 1440p games and it still is. And while it had half the VRAM of the 3090 slash 3090 Ti, it also uses half the power. So you take the pros with the cons. And 24 gigs of VRAM was a lot less important a year or two ago than it is now, in my opinion. And if you've watched this video, or if you want to watch this video, I'll have a link down below. You'll basically see that the 5070 and the 4070 Super basically trade blows with the 5070 coming on top in most games. But some games, the 4070 Super actually does come out on top as well. So we're basically you know, a year in and the 4070 super costs $600. So the fact that it trades blows with the $550 MSRP 5070 means that this thing should be way less than $600, right? Well, that's a big nope. In fact, it costs $744 based on the eBay average from the span of May 9th to May 27th. Let that sink in. $744 with a total of 484 units sold in that time span. So people are definitely buying them. Not only is this somehow worse value than when it released, you actually get less when you buy it used, AKA you're not getting a warranty on this thing when you buy it used. Number one, most warranties don't transfer. And number two, even the ones that do transfer, bought, if it was bought at launch, maybe you have six months left max. But again, most warranties don't actually transfer. So you're basically buying this with no warranty. And speaking of the RTX 5070, I know it gets torched by other tech tubers. And even in my review, I said that I found this GPU incredibly uninspiring, but said as far as value right now, it honestly can't be beat. And if you see right here on Newegg, this brand new GPU costs $609, right? So you're looking at $130 less than the GPU that I just showed you it trades blows with. Not only is it newer, which you will have access to better DLSS technology for longer, but you will get a warranty with it at least two years, which is a big deal. And as I've already said, you save $130. It, it, I don't understand why people are overpaying on eBay. 
So because of its ability to hover very, very close to MSRP, I've seen plenty over the past few weeks at $550 to $600. This took me two seconds of Google searching to pull up. So for mid-range, we will be using the 5070 at between $550 to $600 as the gold standard because basically, as I've already said, it is very easy to find one of these for $600. So we're going to compare every GPU in that price range from NVIDIA and AMD to the gold standard, and we're going to see how it stacks up. Okay, so now let's look at the RTX 4070. I personally hate this GPU. I did a video on it. It's a giant side grade from the RTX 3080. Yes, it's more power efficient. And yes, you get a little bit better features like a newer DLSS. But at the end of the day, when a, when a GPU like the 4070 costs $674 on the used market, and over a thousand of them have been sold this month, it makes absolutely no sense to pay $70 more than the clearly superior RTX 5070. So unless you can find a 4070 for like $400, I would not even sniff it, right? Even if you were to get one at $500, it is not worth $100 less than the, than the price of an RTX 5070. Pretend the 4070 doesn't exist. And like I said, unless you can get it for, let's say $450, don't buy it. It's just terrible value compared to a $600 5070. Now the RTX 4070 Super. Remember, I said six, $600 new. Well, now it is somehow $744. And at $744, it is a joke. Its value is terrible. As I've already stated, don't even buy it. Again, you would have to be at somewhere between $500 to $525 for me to even consider this. Otherwise, I'd basically just pay $600 for the 5070 and a two-year warranty. And I'd look at it as an investment in the future. 4070 Ti, basically a 4070 Super that costs more. Stay far, far away from this one. Nine months ago, you could have had this thing for $500 flat, which was an amazing price at the time with no 5070 out. But even if you can find one for $500, I would still first look to see if I could find an, uh, a 550 to a 575 dollar 5070 first, and even like I said, even that hundred dollars is hard to justify when you could just pay the extra money and get the warranty. You again, you you have to find an amazing deal on the 4070, the 4070 Super, or the 4070 Ti to justify it, and you're talking, you know, hundreds of dollars less than what people can get on the open market, which means you're probably not going to find it. In terms of mid-range GPUs, the 40 series is as good as dead. Don't buy any of these unless you get insane value. They just don't stack up to the good old RTX 5070. All right, now let's move on to the 30 series. Due to the massive amounts of VRAM the 3090 and the 3090 Ti models have, they are basically priced in the high-end market. Now, if you can get one for, say, $600, I would take a 3090 or a 3090 Ti over a 5070 hands down. Now, while the 5070 is definitely more powerful on straight raster and an RT, double the amount of VRAM on the 3090 and especially the 3090 Ti will allow those cards to age more gracefully in 1440p over the 5070. Thanks, NVIDIA. So long story short, they're not really in this conversation, but if you can somehow get like a $600 3090 or even like a $700 3090 Ti, I would 100% go for those and you'll be set for a long time in terms of 1440p gaming. But realistically, I don't think you're going to find those. But you never know. I turned down, mistakenly so, and I very much regret it. I turned down probably like 20 3090s for like 500-ish around the holidays. Big, big mistake on my part. I'll get into that another time. All right, now let's move on to the 3080 Ti. Basically, performance-wise, this thing is like a 4070 Super Lite-ish, right? Like the 3080 Ti, the 3090, the 3090 Ti, the 4070 Super, and the 4070 Ti kind of all fall into this weird cluster of like each other. It's less efficient and definitely not worth the $562 asking price. Because remember, you could just buy a 5070, which is more powerful than all of these GPUs, for $40 more and have a two-year warranty and it'd be much more efficient. And it's not like you're getting a lot of VRAM on the 3080 Ti as you're still only getting 12 gigs of VRAM. So it's not like you're getting a lot more bang for your buck. So honestly, unless you're going to pay like 
four hundred dollars for a 3080 ti it's really hard to justify taking that over you know a 5070 but if you can save two hundred dollars i would honestly if you could you could get one for four hundred dollars which you know maybe if you look on face facebook or you get lucky i think is reasonably possible i would consider a 3080 ti for four hundred dollars and that's the lowest end nvidia card i would consider mid-range anything lower than that you know 3080s and below i would consider those honestly kind of like borderline budget gpus these days now the 3080 is kind of like a unique one which i could honestly develop a whole video on and i plan on doing it but i would not put the 3080 in terms of mid-range gpus anymore okay so let's move to amd now all right so let's start with the 9070 xt if you can somehow get this thing for msrp or even like a hundred dollars over msrp it just wins forget about everything i said about nvidia this thing hands down wins and it's not even close all right this thing is leagues better than the 90 than the 5070 but amd was not able to hold that 600 dollars msrp after launch day essentially and we haven't seen it since and it's more priced in the eight to nine hundred dollar range which basically takes this thing to high-end GPUs. So if you could somehow snag one of these at close to MSRP, then it just it just beats everything, and you should take it. But we're going to move on now because, unfortunately, AMD was not able to hold the MSRP on this, and I have not been as critical as I probably should have been on AMD holding this MSRP, but I understand there are outside factors, and it's really one of those things where, like, you lose if you criticize them because they definitely tried, but if you don't, you get crap, you know, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of thing. So let's move on to the 9070. Again, same with the RX 9070. Uh, you know, the MSRP was $50 less. Unfortunately, you just really couldn't find it after launch day. Uh, the cheapest I've seen it is like $700. And at that point, I just don't think it's worth it. Basically, it depends what you think about RT. And again, I want to make this clear. It's Again, the issue with this one is it frankly just, just costs too much. And it takes it out of the mid-range category and into the high end where it gets mercilessly slaughtered in the high end because you're better off just buying a 9070 XT. So this poor guy kind of gets lost in the shuffle. If you could find it close to MSRP, then maybe, you know, at 550, we can have a conversation but at that point, it honestly just depends on whether or not you value raster more than ray tracing. As its raster performance is, from what I've seen, pretty good. But, you know, again, it loses to the 5070 in ray tracing performance. But I have to admit, AMD's closed the gap quite a bit. Honestly, I don't think I'd even pick one of these up at $600. I'd really, really need to be around the 550 MSRP to kind of justify this one compared to a 5070. So we've talked about the 9000 series. Now let's move on to the 7000 series. All right, so we see that currently the 90, the 7900 XT is being sold for about $700. And it's also one that I have not actually used surprisingly. I'm not actually sure how that happened. But honestly, it comes down to comparing this to the value of the 5070. And with worse raster performance and worse ray tracing performance again it's the same issue that you have with the 4070 super why would, or the other 4070 series why would you overpay for a used model when you can get a 5070 new for six hundred dollars and as you're going to see in the mid-range it comes down to what is the value proposition of this gpu compared to the 5070 at six hundred dollars and you'll see that most of them minus a, a, the occasional deal on the 30 on the 3090 just don't hold up and you also have to remember that you're looking at older RT cores on the 7000 series as well, which certainly don't help it. So now if we move down to the 7900 GRE, which is one I spent a lot of time with, and I looked at it as basically a 4070 Super with slightly higher raster in some games, but worse ray tracing and more VRAM. You basically take everything I said about the 4070 Super and apply it here. You pass on this thing unless you can score one for like, $450 or less. I know my prices are ridiculously low, but it's really, really, really hard to justify only saving, you know, $100 when you lose out on that two year warranty. Because I definitely don't think that's worth the cost. Especially when you're paying, especially when you're paying five, five to $600 for a GPU, you definitely want to spend that money and get the peace of mind. Move down on the stack. 
The 7800 XT, I hate this GPU with a burning passion. It's just a sad grade from a 6800 XT. Avoid it. And honestly, I don't even think the 6800 XT is a good GPU anymore. Especially when you consider the 6900 XT is, it doesn't cost that much difference in price. So let's move down to the 6000 series. The 6950 XT at $537, it just costs too much. And the extra VRAM doesn't make up for its shortcomings versus the 5070. I actually did a video comparing the two. And if we're being quite honest, I was pretty let down by the 6950. I thought it was decent, but it cost way too close to the 5070 to justify even considering it, unless you need more VRAM. But remember, a lot of the good encoding software does not work as good on the 6000 series, which is everybody's argument when comparing the 7800 XT versus the 6800 XT, even though it's one that I don't really like. Now, one GPU that might, might be justified is the 6900 XT. Now, I know on eBay they're selling for close to $500, but I've seen them out in the wild for $400 or sometimes a little bit less, right? If you can snag a 6900 or even a 6950 XT somewhere in the low $400 price range, like $425 or less, I would see that as a justifiable cost savings to recommend the 6950 or the 6900 XT over the 5070. But again, you're going to have to get these things for pretty close to $400, which I have done on both of those models. I actually paid $380 shipped for my 6950, but that was a different market. You know, that was eight months ago, which is, you know, basically a different time period. Again, we go back to the RTX 5070. The value proposition is just too great to overcome. And honestly, unless you're getting an insane, insane, insane deal, which I basically already talked about, you're, lo you're talking like a $400 3080 Ti or a $400 6900 or 6950 XT, basically any of those at $400 or less, then maybe I would consider it. But other than that, the 40 series, the 9000 series, and the 7000 series, they all just cost too much compared to the value that the 5070 brings. I don't like the 5070 personally. I find it uninspiring and a boring side upgrade, but I cannot but you cannot doubt how well it is placed in the current market, which speaks more to the market than anything else, right? We can either play the game or not. And if you want to buy a new GPU now and your budget is somewhere between the four and $700 range, frankly, the 5070 is the gold standard and will be for the foreseeable future. So again, you basically compare everything to the 5070 and you're going to have to save at least over $150 to justify not having a warranty in my eyes or somehow get really, really, really lucky and find the 9070 XT or the 9070 at basically MSRP. And if you do that, they blow the 5070 out of the water. All right, guys. So that's it for this one. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Got a ton more content coming up and we're going to do high end in another video probably later this week or next week. Take care, guys.